Hi there, this is the third podcast on Sketchbook Pro on my iPad. Let's start drawing. Okay, when I start, I usually put my, f my two fingers on the pad here and I pinch out. Okay, and the reason I do that is then it zooms out or zooms in, you know, it, it makes it larger. So I, and I, usually, I typically go to, you know, 200 some odd percent. And then when I'm drawing, for instance, so if I'm going to draw something and, and it looks something like that, okay, we'll just draw real quick. And then when, when I'm wanting to zoom back out, then I just start with my fingers apart and I pinch back in. And you can see about how big this person is on the page. So as I continue to draw, I just push it around with my two fingers. I have two fingers right now on the iPad and I can just position this how I want it. Now I'm not moving the actual object on the page, I'm just moving the page around, so to speak. So then as you continue to draw, Or, do, or just sketch, then you can see what happens as far as w how big this person is on the page. Now if I wanted to move this layer around on the page, there's, there's one way that I can do that. If I come down here and I touch this dot again, and then I come up here on the iPad and I touch that icon. And now what it says is, it's, this is a free transform. I can use two fingers here and I can just move him around on the page. And that's what I love about this. Like on paper, when you draw, you're pretty much committed to where it's at. But this, I can size it. Now I'm pinching in. I can make it smaller. I can make him bigger. Okay. I can even turn him sideways or whatever the case is. So that's what I love about Sketchbook Pro. And then when you're done moving him around, you just simply touch the done. Now in an earlier video, we talked about touching this down here to bring up properties, and then we used, mainly we used this. But you know, I don't often use that. I will most of the time go up here and click on this, this brush here, and it brings up these choices. And this is how I will typically adjust the radius. I'm just dragging my finger there, okay? Or to adjust the opacity. Then also notice down here that I have all those same choices and I can move my finger from right to left and I can look at all the different choices. I can also pick colors here. Okay, so if I'm on black, I can also adjust that black a little bit if I just simply tap on this. And then I can choose colors, I can adjust here using these sliders. This is where I spend most of my time. Okay. Even though I have them over here, and I have colors over here, I just, for some reason, have typically gravitated towards this. Now, something else that I love about Sketchbook Pro is the fact that I can do layers. And to add a layer, what we have to do is go down here and click on this dot here, this icon. And then up here in the upper right, we're going to add another layer. So let's go up here and touch on that layer. And now notice I can adjust the opacity of each layer, but I'm just going to treat this layer as a sketch. Okay. And then I can either add a layer here by just tapping on the plus. And now I have a new layer. And now I can maybe draw over this and just fine tune it a little bit. Or maybe I just want a color. And I want to have the color separate, or maybe this layer is just another a separate person. So let's just treat this uh, as a separate person. Okay, so I've so now this is the layer that I'm on and that I've selected. If I click on this one down here, then what happens is what whatever I'm drawing belongs on this layer. So if I want to draw on this layer and have it be a separate person, I want to make sure that I've selected it. And you know it's selected because the blue is around it. 
Okay, so now just keep in mind I'm not drawing on this layer, but I'm drawing on this one. So let's go back out. And I just tap back here on the pa on the paper somewhere. And then funny that I call it paper. Okay, and now I'm drawing another layer. So I'm just going to zoom in again like I normally do. And I still have my pencil and my black. And let's just draw something else. Okay. So maybe maybe there's a friend here and who's just going to sit or stand beside this other guy and they're just going to be talking. Okay? So you quickly draw, in my case, I'm going to quickly draw this other person. And that's all we're going to do with that. But now, here's what I wanted to show you is now, even though he might be too big, he's not in the right place in relationship with this other one, I can definitely move him around. You see how big he is? So now I can move both of them around if I want. I want to reposition them on the paper, the digital paper. I click on this again. And now, remember which layer we're on? We're on this guy. So if I click on the move, I can now free transform him. I can move him. Maybe I want him right here. Maybe I want him higher. And so on. Or maybe now, I'll click on done. Let's say I wanted to move this first character a little bit. So I click on this again. I go back over to layers. Okay, because I want to select that layer. And I'm going to click on this guy because I want to move him. So now that he's selected, you see the blue around him? And now I can, whatever I do now, I'm going to do to this guy. So I want to put him over here maybe. And then I click done. And now I want to choose this other layer. So I'm clicking back here. Notice you often go here. So I'm moving around pretty quick. And then I touch on layers. And I, I select that layer. I have selected him. And now I'm going to move him. So now I want to move him over here. Do you see how it's so nice to be able to work with layers? Love that part of this. Love, love, love. What do you see now? We color a little bit. And we use some different tools. So let's figure out what layer we're on. Let's check. Again, always back to here. Let's click on the layer. OK, so the layer that's selected, this one here, is this guy. Let's add another layer. So when I color, I just want to color over the top of this guy. I don't want to color in there because then I'll cover up his eye and his hair and stuff. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to add another layer. Okay. So I'm going to click on this plus with my finger. And now I have another layer. And this layer is going to be the color for this guy. Now watch what happens here. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in here. Now I'm going to click back here and click on the top. I clicked on this here. And I'm going to grab a, one of these airbrushes. I'm going, to, I'm going to click on this one, I believe. Okay. And then let's pick a color, a skin tone. Or you know, or I'll just use I'll just use grays here. I'll just use, I'll just color in grays. That's what I will often use. So I'll click on this gray here. And then I can adjust the radius of I don't want to get too big there or the opacity. Okay. So that looks good for now. So now I've picked this airbrush. I picked a gray. I've adjusted the thickness and the opacity of it. Now let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to spray on here. Now notice it's covering him up. Don't freak out about that. Okay, it is covering up some stuff. But what I can do is if this is covering his hair and his ears, I can put this gray behind it. Okay, now watch how we do this. See right now how it's covering his hair. So if I click down here again, always back to here, and then up to layers, here's where this color is. It's above it. So if I grab, if I just touch this and grab this, and I'm going to drag it down below it. See what I'm doing here? It was here, and I'm dragging it down below it. Now watch what happens when I let go. And then it puts that gray behind it. So let's, let's add some more. Let's add a little darker color around the edge here. 
So I'm going to click on this. I'll add another layer. OK. And now let's go back to the grays. And let's make the same gray just a little darker. So I'm actually t going to touch on this here. And then I'm going to just use this slider. And I'm just going to make it a little darker. Okay, and notice as I change it, it changes it over here. As I drag this, it, it changes it here so you can see what it is you were doing. Let's make it just a little darker. And then I'm also going to make the radius not quite so big. It's 22. I'm going to really pull this down here with my finger. And I'll just go down to, oh, who knows, how about 12.99. We'll see what that's like. All right. So now I have a different layer. And I'm going to just now use this as maybe the, the shade. It's a little darker over here because my light source maybe is over on this side. So he's lighter here, and it gets a little darker and a little darker. OK, see how that works? So now I've added some depth to him. And I know it's not great, but that's the general process of that. OK, now, now what happens if I want to move this guy? If I want to move him around, I have three layers that are associated with him. I have one right there, and two, and three. If I want these to be all together, if I just move him now, if I just select this top part, all I'll move is him, and then the colors will stay in place. For instance, watch this. See, and all of his colors stay right there, and that's not what we want. That's not what we want at all. Okay, so let's undo this. Put him back. Let's put these layers together. So here's how we do that. If I want this layer and I'm happy with the colors, I'm going to put this layer with this one. Here's how we do this. I'll select this, come down here, and it says merge, merge with below. So I say yes. And now I'll put these those two layers together. Now we're going to take this layer, these two that are together now, and merge it with this one. Okay? So I come down here again and click on merge. So now when I click here and I move this guy around, his colors come with him. Pretty cool, huh? So you can see how that starts to take shape.